Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Now, term to discuss further into parametric curves. Now, go over example five of the example series. And in this example, we'll go over a pair of parametric equations that graph a figure that's known as the Lissa Joy's uh, figure. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, so let's go further uh, into this. So the example states, sketch the curve with the following parametric equations. So we have x equals to cosine of t, and we have y equals to sine 2t. Yes, yeah, so if we try to graph this, it's not too straightforward what we could use a, either trig identity to do this, but uh, instead what we can do is, is graph x and y separately as functions of t, and then transpose them onto a single graph of x and y. So for example, let's graph uh, the curve for x right here. So let's say we had something that looks like this. Yeah, I'll make this actually a bit smaller. So let's say we had something like this here, and this would be our, let's say our x curve is like this. And instead of an arrow pointing down, we'll make t increasing downwards so that x is going to be on the x-axis, and then we'll have t on the other side. And we'll get to that in a bit. So if we graph uh, x equals to cosine t, where t is downwards positive and x is rightwards positive, then recall that the, uh, the graph for a cosine function is simply something like this. So it looks something like that. Let's draw this a bit neater. So like this, and this is up to 2 pi, and then it keeps repeating itself. And then at this point here, this is just pi over 2. At the center here, this is at pi. And then at this point, this is a 3 quarter mark. So we have 3 pi over 2. Yeah, initially, we have 0 right here. And at this point here, this is the value of this is at 1. That's the x value. And then all the way across here, this is at negative 1. And then it keeps repeating itself, especially even if you go to the negative, negative t, it just goes downwards like that as well. And it keeps going on and on. But we'll just uh, look at the positive side from 0 to 2 pi initially. Yeah, so now what we'll do is, is align a exact same kind of curve or x, y axis here. So I'll align this downwards. And we'll draw a curve like this. And then here, what we will get is a function like this. And then, so then this one will have the x, and then we'll have a y right here. So we have x, so that x aligns with this. And now we have a y axis. And what we're going to do is align the y axis across all the way here. So what we'll have is on this side right here, I'll draw one pretty close like that. So I'll draw it like this. And then what we have now is a y here. And now we have y as a function of time on this axis. So we'll have time like that. So this is what we have. And now on this case, we could draw this equation, y equals sine t. So I'll write that down right here. So this is x equals to cosine t. And now what we want to graph is, is sine 2t. Yeah, and if you recall from my earlier videos on, I'll put the link up below on trigonomic functions and also transforming trigonomic functions because there's a 2 inside there. And basically, because of the 2, if we're graphing from 0 to 2 pi, what that means is when we plug in 2 pi into t, that becomes 4 pi. So when we plug in pi, we get 2 pi. So basically, what we end up actually having is the sine curve repeats itself uh, twice. Or yeah, it goes back and it has two periods in from 0 to 2 pi. In other words, uh, the graph of sine, but then it's going to be compressed. So we're going to have something like that looks like, I'll draw, draw this a bit higher, like that. And then it goes, and then it repeats itself twice, like, like this. I'll draw this actually a bit neater, like that. And then it gets back to there. So initially here, this was supposed to be pi over 2, but because of this 2 there, this is going to be uh, pi over 4 to get pi over 2. So this is pi over 4. And then again, I'll just write this down. This is y equals to sine 2t. So everything just gets compressed. And this goes all the way to here to 2 pi, like that. And then from here to here, this is now pi over 2. So we go pi over 4. We just move by a quarter now. 
pi over 2, and then the middle point right here. Actually, notice this is not the middle point here right now. This is pi over 2, so we want to get the middle. It's going to be actually here. So pi, this one, we add another quarter. So that's going to be a quarter to that. That's just going to be 3 pi over 4. And then here, this is pi over 2. And this pi over 2 is the same thing as writing 2 pi over 4. So notice it's just a, uh, we're just adding a quarter each time because we've divided it by 2 because it's 2 there. And then at the, yeah, that's at this point, this is 3 pi over 4. And then at this point here, this is at, now we move it by another quarter, so pi, 5 pi over 4. And then at this point, we have 6 pi over 4 which is the same thing as writing 3 pi over 2. And then at this point, all the way across in this part right here, this is another quarter, so that's 7 pi over 4. And then this 2 pi is the same thing as writing 8 pi over 4. So just to show you how this is the sine curve, but it's squeezed, uh, it's, it's squeezed so that we can fit two sine curves inside because of the two there. So now, if we want to graph the x and y's, what we can do is, Let's start off at this uh, point right here at x equals to 1. So if x equals to 1, we could just graph this all the way downwards like that. And let's say it goes all the way to somewhere around here. And now we have to align it with when uh, y, I mean when, when uh, the t equals to 0 here. So we have t is equal to 0. This is this line. And then at, when t is equal to 0, we have it over here as, at 0. So this is at t equals to 0, and the point right here is going to be at x is 1, y is 0. That's here. So this is at 0, and this is at 0. So we start off there, and now let's see where we end up. The next notable uh, point, well, we have, uh, we have this point actually here. This is when, co when x is 0, and we bring it down. x is 0, but we have... Uh, t is equal to pi over 2 right here. So we have 0, bring it down, and we'll see where this pi over 2 gets to. And that's, in fact, the 0 point. So this is pi over 2. So that means we have another 0 right here. And this is at, and I'll put an arrow like this. Yeah, this point right here is equal to t is equal to pi over uh, 2. Okay, so we have that, but we don't know how it gets to that. But in fact, before that, we have this point is pi over 4. So we could line this up across, all the way across like that, and then see where we have it pi over 4. So if this is pi over 2, this is 0 right here. In between is going to be pi over 4. So in between is going to be, well, somewhere here. So this is at our pi over 4 point. So then it's going to be somewhere down like that. I'll just go down. So we have a maximum point right here. And everything is a smooth curve like that. So what it means is we have to go from here. We have to reach this. And then we have to eventually get back down here. So we have an arrow that looks like this. So the arrow goes across. That's how we trace the curve. And now the next notable figure, well, we have this. Uh, we already have the zero mark. So let's go over to here. This is at 3 pi over 2. And we could just draw a line across it like this, just to line up with this 3 pi over 4. I mean, not pi over 2. So 3 pi over 4, where would that be? So if it's 3 pi over 4, we have pi over 2. And this is, pi, uh, this is just pi. In other words, this is going to be 2 pi over 4. Actually, I mean 2 pi over 2. So this is pi over 2, and then this is pi. That, then that means in between here is we're going to have to have 3 pi over 4. That's going to be actually directly in between. So that's going to be somewhere here. Because you could write this as, at this point, we have t is equal to pi over 2, which is the same thing as writing 2 pi over 4. And then at this point, this is going to be pi. The same thing as writing t equals to 4 pi over I mean, yeah, 4 pi over 4. So right directly in between, we have that 3 pi over 2, which is this point. So we can drag this point all the way down, all the way down across. And then we have it connects to this point, something like that. In here, just uh, move that up, just fix the scale up just to look a bit neater. So then this goes down here. And then what we end up having the next point as well at this point, when we have 
this uh, t is equal to pi, which is at this very point, and that's gonna be, well, somewhere here. I don't have it too accurately drawn, but it's gonna be somewhere like this, and then this is when pi, and notice pi is at this point, when we have uh, zero, uh, when y is zero, so it connects to this point. So just like this curve, we go from there, now we go back down, and then we have an arrow like this. And then likewise, the next step is again we have, so we go to pi, now we go all the way to here, which is five pi over four, and lines it up somewhere here. And then where we go, where we see pi over four, and again, we just move by a quarter each time, so we go from here to here, and the next one's gonna be obviously this point, so in between these two like that, and that point is actually just over here. So then this goes somewhere up like that, and then, so that arrow is going like that, and then the next point, uh, the next uh, significant point is, is, well, we have the zero right here, that's at three pi over two, and that's when it's zero, and then we have again three pi over two. So it goes back to zero. And then actually exact same thing in, in this point right here, seven pi over four, lines up with in between these two. That's gonna be seven pi over four, which is right here somewhere. So that's gonna be actually through this point. So you can see the pattern. So it goes back to it. And then the last point we have this two pi where uh, t is equal to two pi and then y is equal to zero. And then what we have in this point we have two pi so that uh, x is equal to one. So it ends up going all the way across there and then it repeats itself. Yeah, as you can see, let's draw this arrow other way around. Yeah, just something like that. So as you can see, it goes like this around and around. It can go either way if you were going backwards, but that's the shape. Yeah, and now to get a more accurate uh, drawing of it, well, you could just use a calculator. So here's a calculator here. I put the link there and you could see it. And uh, yeah, so this is the curve. And as you can see, you could pl plug in the cosine t, sine t, I'm sine 2t, and it will graph this like this. And this is a pretty cool calculator. So as you can see, it looks just uh, exactly like our shape, just a bit neater. And it goes around either way, et cetera, all the way around, around the circle. I mean, this random shape like that. It's a pretty cool shape. And it goes back down and, and through it like that. So that's a cool shape. So now this curve is known as a Lesojo's figure and is part of the Lesojo's family of curves. I will go over the Lesojo's curves and their history as well as the founder Lesojo's in more detail in a later video. So stay tuned because it's quite interesting, especially when you go through some of the history of the mathematics and the mathematicians behind it because this is some important stuff. This is actually used in a lot of uh, electronic applications. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you'll learn from this pretty extensive uh, graphing video on this uh, sketching these parametric equations. And you hopefully enjoy, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.